would be. It's really the big three for the Davidson Wildcats. Early, Murray, and Dakota Dukes as well. If you can control the big three, you've got an excellent chance of coming out of here with a win. And, th and that's a tall order, even just to control those big three because their versatility and the arsenal they bring, especially Laura Murray, it just makes it hard for one individual to defend. That was the last touch to buy. Dukes on the inside. Davidson was picked to finish third. Both the coaches and the media had him there. They lost a ton from last year. Alex Andravages, who holds seven school records, but Laura Murray trying to break one of them, the all-time scoring lead. Wakama rims out her first shot attempt, and we've got a foul underneath. Michelle Savage takes Davidson in here, the Northwestern grad, 92. Fourth year with Davidson. And on the opposite bench, it's Karen Middleton. Fifth year with Western Carolina. She has got him back into the semifinals for the first time since 2009 when Western Carolina lost in the championship game. Kristen Lyon gets him on the board. A lot of purple in the house, as you had mentioned. Not a far ride from the campus of Western Carolina, and they're making some noise. That'll quiet them a little bit. Hannah Early shows some of the range. That's actually a close one for her. <laughs> it is a close one. 44% on the year. She doesn't have as much room to step back when she's down on the baseline. Not as much gap. She likes to step back deep. Hannah Hayden with the answer. Western Carolina can shoot the three as well. They have four players in the top 13 of the Southern Conference. Now it's Erickson. If the game can keep this pace, everyone in the building will be thrilled. <laughs> we have a shooting barrage right now. And we are seeing what Davidson likes to do best, which is sit back in there, soft man to man. Clog it up in the middle, and then going down the other end, stand outside and launch the long-range jumpers. Murray lost the handle of it. Dives down to the floor. It's scooped up by Terry. Western has numbers. Two Wildcats are slow to get back. It's Wakama on the penetration. Leaves it off for Joseph. It stays on this end of the floor. Wakama has been everywhere so far. In fact, even on that one, Crashing the boards, trying to get to the basket. Ball goes back to Western on the tip out. Here's Terry. Lost it as Duke's got a hand on one. Missed with the right hand. And we got a foul here as McCabe was pushed down. How about the keys to the game, Robin? Western, they're always stingy. In their defense, third in scoring defense in the conference. And beyond their three big scorers, they need Joseph, they need Simpson to step up and hit. And then for Davidson, that's that balanced scoring that we've talked about, the big three. But they have got to rebound, probably the biggest weakness in their program. It's tough when you're replacing Alex Andravages and you've got another one of your big girls out. Mel Geigrich got injured early on in the year. Ball dribbled out of bounds, and we're seeing a much different tempo and level of battling on the inside right now than we saw in that previous game that seems sort of uh, at a, a, a rate that we expected, kind of plotted through. This one, there's high volume of shots. It's much more evenly matched teams. Neither one coming out shell-shocked at all. That is an odd occurrence there. Laura Murray, an air ball. Here in Middleton, has a pretty nice resume in herself, a player at South Carolina. She was assistant there at South Carolina, at East, Eastern Washington, and then 10 years under Tara Vandeveer at Stanford. Murray made up for her air ball. Steal and an assist to the trailing McCabe.
Western Carolina trying to become the lowest seed to ever make the championship game. They currently hold that record. They were a six seed in 2004. Under Kelly Harper, they won the championship as a six seed in double overtime. Here's Murray again, second straight steal on a Western Carolina possession. Laura Murray is another one of those heady players. We saw Taylor Hall in the first game. Murray, very similar in that she has range and she has versatility in her game. Both ends of the floor as well. Strong defensive player. She'll crash the boards hard. Senior Hayden. And now the sophomore Joseph who spins her way around Erickson. Picked up by Lyon who works in against McCabe. Nice box out by Davidson. A lot of white jerseys on the inside. Ball even hits the deck. Murray now sliding to her left. Count the basket for Murray. I like the energy. I love the fist pump at the end by Murray. The senior Murray has Davidson out to a seven point lead. Chance to make it eight. Laura Murray matched her season high in the first game in the tournament for Davidson yesterday. She dropped in 26 points on 10 field goals. And her basket now makes it five starters, all who have scored for the Wildcats. It's about as balanced as you could be in four and a half minutes. It certainly is. And that's what we're going to see throughout the afternoon for Davidson is that balanced scoring. And when they have more than the big three scoring, they usually come up with a W. 10-0 run for Michelle Savage's Wildcats. Murray almost got her third steal here in the first five minutes. Erickson will take one instead. Up ahead to Murray, and Erickson will be fouled on the follow. A strong shot by Murray, but great follow from oh, Shannon Erickson. She's a little bit of an unsung hero. And she does a lot of the quiet things. Nice steal, shooting the gap in the passing lanes. And then on the follow, draws a foul. Junior out of Fairfax, Virginia. Bumped up her play in conference play this year, helping Davidson out to an 11 and 7 record in league play. Run extends by a point. Lasts about the last four minutes here of the game. You know, we thought we'd see a back and forth battle, but this zone defense by Davidson, very high and wide, is taking away those seams for Western Carolina. Mackenzie Campbell missed on her first shot attempt. It'll be an offensive rebound for the Catamounts, who have also brought Justin Taylor off the bench. 20 point efforts in each of the first two tournament games, including 26 yesterday, a new career high. 
She's got it here at the top. And she was 13 of 13 from the free throw line yesterday, including those last six I talked about in that sealed the deal for Western Carolina over Furman. This, remember, Darren, this is their third game. Davidson has just played one. Western had to play in, then they play it again yesterday. Third game in a row. Be interesting to see how those legs are holding up. Confidence is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Once you get on a roll. It sure is. Here's Piles, the freshman using the window. 13-0 run. Look at the big, big gap in the center of that zone, but Davidson plays so wide. They have long, long wingspans. They make it hard to see that, that where the openings are. Lindsey Simpson had that right heel on the sideline. Western Carolina already showing off their depth. They've gone nine deep so far. Uh, here's a look for Davidson without depth, but their freshman going with the move to the baseline side. Nice job using the window. Simpson checks Erickson here. Down into the corner, the three rims off for McCabe. Davidson, a very good three-point shooting team, second best in the league. Of course, paced by Murray and Early. Allie Lane couldn't find a seam, but she finds Taylor. She stays hot, connecting on her first try today. Great movement in that offensive sequence for Western Carolina. A lot of cuts through, and the ball swinging from side to side. The last. Dribble drive to the interior, draws the defense in, and opens it up for that baseline jumper. Western had missed its last eight shots. A badly needed one for the junior college transfer off the bench. Allie Lane working the point guard spot, number 20. She and Hannah Hayden, who's now on the bench, interchange, and they bring different strengths. Hayden's a scorer. And Campbell's a three-point shooter off the bench, seventh best percentage in the league. Western has answered a 13-0 run with a couple of threes. Here's Early for the answer, there it is. Early makes it look easy. That's a second time from the same spot. And whenever Davidson needs an answer, you're going to see Early or Murray with the ball. One of three Wildcats that averages in double figures. Lob into the traffic. Piles was the one who got a hand on. Erickson passed on it. Early happy to take it. Third of the day. Erickson may not take that one, but Early, Early said, it. just flip it over here. I'll be happy to. That <laughs> Bottom of the net barely moved. 63 threes now on the season for Hannah Early. A timeout on the floor. Davidson doubling up Western Carolina. Three of the four Western buckets have been from three. Trying to keep them in it. This is Davidson. Here, you'll get to know your professors. You'll make friends for life. You'll compete and excel in Division I sports. You'll be held to the highest standards of honor and integrity. And your need-based financial aid will include grants and employment, but not loans. Honor, excellence, opportunity. This is Davidson. 19 men's and women's sports. 20 Rhodes Scholars. 11 prestigious academic institutions. An APR of 982, fifth in the nation eight FCS National Championships. Established the first conference basketball tournament, home to iconic sports figures. This is the nation's fifth oldest conference, the Southern Conference. The 2014 SOCOG Softball Championship. 
May 7th through the 10th. Come support your favorite team on the campus of UNCG in Greensboro, North Carolina. Catch the first round through the semifinals live for free on SoCon TV. Saturday's championship game will be aired live on ESPN3. Follow all of the action on Twitter using hashtag SoConSB. Southern Conference Tournament from the U.S. Cellular Center in Asheville. Robin Muller, Darren Goldwater, Nate Ross, third part of our crew. Hannah Early has been the story early on. Four of Davidson's field goals of their eight are from three, and she's got three of them. Nothing like being perfect on your start. Three for three from behind the arc there. Lindsay Simpson gets behind the three. It's the same story for both sides. All but one basket for Western has been from three. Laura Murray can't save this one back, originally intended for center. These are two teams that love the three-point arc. Their offenses are geared towards it in terms of ball movement, in terms of dribbling into the guts of the defense and looking for those kickouts. Combined, they've made 13 shots, and eight of them are from three. Taylor already has one. Six on the day now. Taylor even had time to think about that one. Defense not willing to contest on that. Afraid she might put it on the deck. Instead, she just buries it. Now the Wildcats will go inside. Piles lost the handle, but she was fouled. It's a wild start. You don't typically see teams trade threes at this rate right out of the gate. Murray looks to add to it. And that shot brought rain. She has such a pretty rotation on it and a lot of height. You can hear the twine on those. She became the all-time leader yesterday. She now has 216 in her career. Campbell missed, got her own miss, and now the old school three-point opportunity. And there's some energy from the squad in purple as well. And talking with their SID last year, as you see the follow here from Mackenzie Campbell, her parents have not missed a game. One or the other of her parents have been at every game she has played. That's a lot of travel. It's over 90 games. She's a junior traveling from Kingsport, Tennessee into the mountains of Cullowhee or wherever Western Carolina might be. That's right. Well, you're going down to Birmingham or Statesboro, Georgia. That's a long road trip. Early. Justin Taylor wants to push for Western Carolina. Davidson went on a 13-nothing run. Their lead grew to as much as 11. Western Carolina can get it back to a single possession game here inside of 10 minutes left in the half. There's Lindsey Simpson with the runner off the glass. Nice play. Duke saves it back in. Nice shot, well contested. Simpson didn't really have enough on it to get the shot to go down. Quick pull up here for Murray, halfway down. Neither of these teams use a lot of the shot clock. That's another difference we're seeing from our previous game where we saw both teams taken deep into the shot clock. If this gets below 15 seconds left on that clock, something's wrong. The bad pass from McCabe. Allie Lane picks it. It's wild that Davidson wants to play at this tempo considering their lack of depth. Now Lane spins around McCabe. Western certainly has a, a larger bench, obviously more players and, and some players they can go to with frequency. Dukes turns it over. And turnover is becoming a problem now. 
for Davidson on a couple of these trips. That's their sixth. What a difference between the second semifinal and the first. Chattanooga had a 20 point lead in the blink of an eye. And neither team really excelled beyond the arc in the first game. Alex Abraham keeps that one alive briefly for Dukes to scoop it up. And Laura Murray in the mix as well. She's always around the ball. Erickson had Simpson leaning one way, able to get to the glass. It'll stay with Davidson as Erica Joseph was on the baseline. Western Carolina making a bit of a push. They've closed an 11-point deficit down to three. Inside of the U.S. Cellular Center, Robin Muller, Darren Goldwater, and here's the third member of our crew, Nate Ross. You know, Robin, I love listening to huddles. It's not a complicated game. Coach Savage said two things. Move the basketball and make yourself available when your teammate picks their dribble up or standing around and watching. It's a simple game. You just got to execute. You're right, Nate. It's a simple game. And the simpler you keep it, the less gray hair you get. In Nate's case, the more hair he would keep. <laughs> Piles with her first basket. Winner gets the Chattanooga Lady Mox in tomorrow's championship game in the automatic berth in the NCAA tournament on the line there. Taylor. And a foul as Joseph hits the deck. Erica Joseph has come a long way this season. Just a sophomore. 11 points yesterday and becoming a very physical presence. You can see the co contact on the inside. A lot of times in this tournament, we've seen teams try and settle in, take a while to find their groove. Hasn't been the case at all here. These teams both came out as though they were already in perfect rhythm. I think their groove is high velocity. <laughs> Here's Joseph. Volleyballed around. Alex Long controls. Talked about one of the keys for Davidson is that they've got to rebound. Well, it's tough to rebound when you're shooting over 56% from the floor. There aren't those opportunities to get the ball back again. With Dukes on the bench, Piles now has a couple of buckets recently. And Piles, perhaps the fourth scorer that the Davidson big three need. They've usually been able to find somebody, and it hasn't always been the same somebody. But when they got that extra punch from another player, that's where their success comes. Very unexpected. She's one point off of a career high right now. She's got six. 
Inside 10, Allie Lane tries to break down long. Instead, it'll be up top to Erica Joseph. Pyle's feeling good. She wants it down there on the block. Instead, Davidson reverses to the other wing. Here's Dukes. Turns it over. Nice job reading the handoff. Justin Taylor able to deflect that back into her own hands. And that's a play you're going to see a lot from Davidson, and they have the timing down pretty well. But credit Taylor for stepping into that passing lane. Another one into the passing lane. That was Erickson and the pull-up from Long. These teams need to just camp out behind the three-point line. Much more successful out there. Uh, much higher shooting percentage from behind the arc. Good look ahead. Inside the arc shot, pretty flat. But on the follow, get another opportunity at the free throw line. Ninth best free throw shooter in the conference here, Dukes. And the first break of the day for Laura Murray. It's the third meeting of the year, Davidson and Western Carolina. First one was a four-point win for the Wildcats up in Cullowhee. That was followed by a 10-point win for the Wildcats in Davidson. Laura Murray went off in that game, as she has been known to do throughout her career. And right now, buoyed by the play of the freshman piles, the Wildcats have produced their second significant run of this half, had 13 straight earlier, seven straight now. As long as they can maintain that pressure with the margin, they can be in the driver's seat. Hannah Hayden missed the turnaround. Diving down to the floor, it'll be Long who scoops it up. Miss Q with a dribble there. Fans asking for a double on it. And they're not going to like this one either. Didn't get that call. Then it goes out of bounds and stays on this end. And a very short break for Laura Murray. She's right back in it. All eight players the Wildcats have available have seen the floor here in the first half. Long finds Dukes down there with McC Kenzie Campbell on her. She got a piece of the shot. Good positioning by Campbell. Stays extended and able to just deflect a little bit of that shot off. Davidson has been in the zone for most of this half. They switch to the man and lose it out of bounds. It stays on this end. Kristen Lyons didn't have a whole lot of space for that shot. I'm surprised she took it, especially going up against Laura Murray, who's a very strong defender on the dribble drive. Four seconds on the shot clock here for Hayden. With two, she'll pull the trigger. Nice hands, Sean and Terry knocks one free. Neither team's been good with the ball in this half. No, <laughs> they've been frequent turnovers. And feels like both teams have gotten a little stagnant offensively at this point in time. Perhaps good defense, perhaps just sloppy play. Particularly Western, they've now missed their last nine shots. And the catalyst for their run in the tournament, Justin Taylor takes a hard fall here as we've got a timeout. 3.43 to play in the half. Davidson's lead is just one point shy of as big as it's been all day. The 2014 SoCon Men's Golf Championship. Southern Conference golfers will take on Pinehurst at the National Golf Club in Pinehurst, North Carolina, April 20th through the 22nd. Get all of the live updates on Twitter using hashtag SoConMGolf. Don't miss the championship action. 
This is SOCON Men's Golf. minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Yep, everybody knows that. Well, did you know that some owls aren't that wise? Don't forget I'm having brunch with Megan tomorrow. Who? Megan, my coworker. Who? Seriously, you've met her like three times. Who? <sighs> Geico. 15 minutes could save you. Well, you know. Nobody came into this semifinal round feeling as good as Western Carolina. Certainly Chattanooga came into the semis with a big winning streak, but the story that was the unheralded story was Western Carolina. Yet this is now their second long drought in the half. They had missed eight straight earlier. Now they've missed nine straight. And you pointed it out, Robin. This is the third game in three days for Western Carolina. Whereas Davidson had a buy into the quarters yesterday. And as a coach, you don't make a lot about that to your team. But underlying factors prevail in that there's still some fatigue. Shanika center. This is a deep two. Both feet were on the line. Even though there's plenty of depth. Nobody's used to playing three games in three days. Try and play in the early season tournaments to get some type of a feel for it. And finally, it's Shauna Terry who takes the lid off the basket for the Catamounts. Uh, and if you had a feel for it early in the season, you've lost that feel. And even those early holiday tournaments, it's generally just two in a row. Center now down for the offensive rebound. Piles, though, lost it. Mackenzie Campbell has given Western Carolina some great minutes off the bench. Wakama walked with it. A little too creative with the steps there. Western's leading scorer has yet to score Wakama. They need a little bit of production from her going into this halftime. Give them a, a bit of a boost. Foul inside on McCabe. <laughs> Michelle Savage wants an explanation, asking what she did a couple of times. Campbell holds at the top here. And now Wakama trying to create, gets her own miss. That was a circus shot. She couldn't get it to fall on the first opportunity. And the second, too many white jerseys around for an easy look. And you can tell she's desperately trying to get in that scoring column. Great pass from McCabe inside to Dukes. Sees parted just enough. Davidson did a great job in that offensive set of clearing away the help side defense. That gives Dukes the lone look on the inside. Here's Justin Taylor. Had a couple of early threes, lost it in the lane this time. That's the ninth turnover for Western Carolina. The trailer is McCabe. Another three for the Wildcats. Timeout Davidson. Davidson taking the use it or lose it. But how many times you see when the guard gets into the paint, they're kicking it back out. <laughs> Most of the times they're pulling up underneath that free throw line, putting up a short jumper. Not Laura Murray. She's looking for the long range, the high volume shots. Let's go with our higher percentage shots from behind the arc. Four different Wildcats have hit a three. The latest gives them their largest lead of the half. 
They've hit six threes on 13 total made shots. <laughs> it's pretty scary when your three point field goal percentage is even with or higher than your overall percentage. Western's three point percentage is significantly higher than their overall. They've now turned it over on back to back possessions. Western perhaps a little frazzled. This Davidson defense has been very steady and they're taking away any of those interior opportunities. Part of their offense is based on being able to drive into the gaps and kick it out, but the gaps have closed whenever they've tried to put the ball on the floor. Murray tries to get around Simpson and runs into a double team. Here's Murray now over Shauna Terry. 40 seconds to play here in the opening half. Davidson used a 13-0 run to separate from Western, which only led by two early on in the game. Here's another three from Mackenzie Campbell. And Terry keeps it alive. Nice rebound by Terry. Now Western can hold for the last shot of the half. Perhaps close this gap. Easy look inside for Terry. Deserved it after getting the extra possession. Great recognition by your guards. Let's reward our post player for doing the work. At the buzzer, Campbell turns away Alex Long. Great half off the bench for Campbell. Three boards, six points, a couple of blocks. But it wasn't enough to stem the tide of the Davidson Wildcats shooting. They knocked down six threes. Four different players hit a three. And the Wildcats looking for their third trip to the championship game have an 11-point lead.